second I hit record. He was just doing the cutest thing. And the second I hit record, you go ahead and get out of frame. Hey, Punkin, you sticking around to say hello for a change? You're not gonna run and hide? That's nice, people like to say hi. How you doing, bite? Waiting for cookies. Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, how's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. Got a whole bunch of stuff lined up that I need to get done. Construction, done. Windows are new for the most part. Doors stayed the same. Windows are looking nice, nice and shiny. And they have the thing so you can do the thing with the blinds. You lose some frame on the, uh, no, do people, y'all care about windows? Probably not. There were some questions about what they were. I wrote it down, where to go. There were questions about the new windows and who made them. It, I, I don't remember. I wrote it down. It's on a piece of paper somewhere and I can't find that piece of paper. Pure somebody did something with the paper. Very dark outside and gloomy. Off to a great start. Haven't even talked about what's going on in the video. So what happened when the pets show up, when I have the camera out, I always want to play with them, make sure they get some screen time because y'all like to see them and they're always hiding these days. You want your cookies? You gotta stand up, you gotta do something for it. There you go, that was nice. Good stand, pumpkin. Good boy, sit. Good sit, there you go, good boy. Okay, so what's going on today or this week really since the windows are done which means i can go ahead get this rack pushed back take down the table and get some new shelves set up that's been a long time coming and i'm looking forward to getting this done i'm also kind of in the mood to just get moving with things and not talk about too terribly much because i've like I said been waiting to do this for a long time so i'm going to get a path cleared so i can walk around and start moving some plants back onto this shelf get it scooted back finish filling it in, break this one down. And y'all see, I'm gonna be going through the plants while I'm doing this, cause I imagine they're not gonna be looking great cause they've spent about uh, 10 days, almost, give or take a couple. Without the lights, they get some natural light and most of the plants are over here, low light plants, they should have been okay with that, but it's just, they're probably thirsty. So it's, it is, this needs to be done. Gotta get them moved over, give them a good drink and uh, you know, start taking care of things, finally. Uh, fine, it's not like I haven't been taking care Oh, right as I was saying, it's not like I haven't been taking care of things, I see this. Looking a little bit thirsty. There were people out here. I couldn't have water flowing all over the place. That's why I turned the temperatures down so that the plants wouldn't be as starved for water. They wouldn't be in much of an active growth. Just kind of was letting them chill while this was all going on. It's only been a few days since I watered with this croton though. It's a diva. You missed the, the watering by like one day. And this is what it does. So I guess before I get started on all that, I need to get the water pumping in here because it's getting low and then get this hose detached. Give the croton a drink and then start building some shelves. Get things looking nice over there again. Make it so I can walk around. Okay, I think I'm gonna be watering more than just the croton. This might take longer than I thought. Okay, it's starting to get to a point where I think I need to replace these Matt's down here, that's getting torn up. I don't really know where to start here. I think this is just one of those situations where you just gotta grab things and start moving them with two hands. Maybe don't move the table saw with one hand. Probably not a great idea. Good saw, hasn't been used in a while, needs a new blade. Wow, they do look kind of dusty and thirsty. This needed to be done and I'm seeing what looks like, yeah, I have an alocasia back here that y'all didn't know about that's not looking too hot, but I'm sure that it's savable. That wasn't really the point of any of this. I have this shelf on sliders here, so I can go ahead and just scoot that right back where it needs to go and start moving the things over. Yeah, see? No, probably not, because it's not in focus because it's too dark. We'll bring it over here to the light. Oh, I moved the, can you see? Move the plants, easy to do, only took a minute. This is the only plant that's just not looking <laughs> too hot. It's a, Definitely been struggling. It's an Alocasia cerion. I've had trouble with that one from the beginning because it has too much potting mix. We can come back over since I'm still talking about it. The potting mix in here is so high that when I watered, it just runs everywhere. I need to get this repotted, <laughs> obviously, right? Not looking so good. Slightly larger pot with more of a lip so that I can water it without having to stand around for five minutes at a time to give it a little sip and then wait and a little sip and then wait. That will make a big difference. I'm not shocked that this one looks like this. It's not dead, not dying. Well, I guess it is technically dying, but it'll be okay. It has a new leaf opening up. Get that some water, it should be fine. And then uh, the Xanthosoma Lime Zinger has seen better days too. But again, it's just like the other plant. 
Just cut all that stuff off, it'll flush back out. Should be totally fine. Lots of dead stuff to prune up off the plants out here. Some of that's just because it's just summertime stuff that dies off when you move them in and some of it's from things drying out for a little while. Plants are moved, as you can see, all over here on this rack. The idea with the, maybe I should set the new rack up before we talk about it too much. I'm gonna get this taken apart, which that should be fun because the way I put this together, I don't know how well I'm gonna be able to show you. It's a lot of interesting jerry-rigged lighting, little chains and things I gotta pull apart in order to get those down. I don't think it'll be that bad. It's going to be more a matter of keeping straight in my head which lights go where onto the next rack. But again, it probably won't be that bad. I was thinking that it seems fairly likely that some of these lights may not work when I go to set them back up. They've gotten kind of old. I replaced a few of them last year. I want to say six out of the 10 got replaced, or no, four of the 10 got replaced last year and the other six are still fairly old. And these two that were right here, I already took one down. These specifically are just cheap, regular shop lights that I put LED grow bulbs in. So there's nothing fancy to them. They are weather rated. I don't remember specifically what the IP rating was for them, but the little bit of splashing that they got on them shouldn't be enough to break them down. But with these style lights, it's not uncommon to have to come in here and have to change out the end caps and sometimes, usually there's a ballast in here somewhere, which is just like a little cylinder that you just untwist to pull out and put a new one in. So if that's the case, not a huge deal other than just having to find the pieces. This one is being much more stubborn. First one I pulled out, popped out no problem. Go figure, as soon as I turn the camera on, gonna give me trouble, that's fine. There we go. Also trying to remember as I'm doing this to be mindful of the microphone because some of these sounds might be kind of clanky and annoying coming through. Hopefully that won't be too bad. What I really need to remember is to hold on to these parts. Don't want to lose it. They're just S hooks. Wouldn't be the end of the world. Should be fairly easy to replace them. Great opportunity to get in here and get these cords organized. I was thinking I might take some tape and put it on multiple points on those cords so that I can label them and remember which ones chain to which ones, because most of these can daisy chain uh, up to 10 lights, and that's a good amount to need to keep track of and remember the proper order. Was that loud and obnoxious? I'm sorry. One table down, one to go, and having to get the little pins pushed in when the table's been set up for like two years. There we go. Well, no, not quite. These things right here, they've gotten stiff. I put a little bit of WD-40 in there. That kind of helped. Not a ton, kind of making a weird screechy sound that I'm sure none of you want to hear. Probably not the smartest way to go about things. Hey, welcome to my channel where I make horrible, loud, scratching metal sounds for 20 minutes. Have to say, I am impressed with the lack of rust on the metal parts of these tables. There are a few spots that could be sanded down really easily considering how much water these have had on them over the years. Not too bad, not bad at all. Okay, last one, and then I have to figure out what, it, what I don't, I don't know what I'm gonna do with the lawnmower. That's a problem for another time. Who cares about that right now? This is, this one's gonna be gross. I think it's probably time for me to go ahead and get this put away. And then I can bring the new shelves out and have a look at how those are going to fit in here. Get those put together and I should probably clean the wall back here since that hasn't been in a few years, but let's be real here. This doesn't sound like something I'm gonna do. Well, this is going to be awkward. It's, it's, Something happened, big surprise. I was really looking forward to getting these shelves set up, having a whole nother row here of these four foot by two foot shelves, but they're 14 inches taller so I can put taller plants on the shelves. That was the entire point. Brought the box out and noticed something on the side. What's that say? 36 by 24 by 80, that's, that's not what I ordered. I grabbed the measuring tape just to like double check, see what was going on in here. That's 23 on the inside. 36. I don't even know what shelf this is. Absolutely no clue. I got on Home Depot's website. I didn't even see this on there. I didn't look very long. I was just on trying to find the return policy things and the receipts. I can still return it, take it to the store. It says 90 days for things that aren't furniture. And this was listed under storage and garage organization. So it should be okay with that. But getting the new shelf is going to take a week. They don't have it in store. So uh, this was fun. I had a great time taking these tables apart and moving things. I was just 
wait one more week and hope that they show up on time. Says they won't be here till Friday, and yet, you know, these videos come out on Saturdays, so in order for that to be a part of next week's video, it has to show up on Friday. So I'm going to get to ordering the new set of shelves as soon as I'm done with this filming right here. I'm so sorry. I know y'all like longer videos, and this was supposed to be a fun video of putting plants away and organizing and looking at them, but it's just the... My bad. It's sitting around since October. Well, I don't... Not since October. I ordered it October 11th. I don't think it arrived until mid to late October, and then I had to move the plants inside unexpectedly then had to wait for the windows to get done to do the new shelves thing and the windows just got finished yesterday just how things go sometimes i'm frustrated with home depot for sending the wrong shelves but i'm more frustrated with myself for not having just looked at the box i looked at the box and i was like yeah that looks like 24 by 48 because it is i measured it but obviously that's going to be a larger package for holding something 24 by 4. You know, nobody's perfect. Stuff happens. I'm frustrated, mostly because I feel bad because I said that this was something that was going to happen on the channel. It had been dragging on for so long, but it's just one more week. Not the end of the world makes watering out here a little bit more complicated because I don't have the plants lined up the way that I would like to, but that's still not that big of a deal. Because again, it's just one more week. I am going to go through and get these guys cleaned up because they are looking scraggly. I do like to get as much of the junk out from around the stems as possible because that tends to be where the critters accumulate. By critters, I mean things like mealybugs. They get down into those little nooks and crannies. It's easier to just not have them in there. It's already a new leaf that's going to pop open on this one, so I'm not concerned about it. There was another... Oh, it's right here. <laughs> right, right there. This is the Sarian, I believe, that I showed at the beginning of the video that was looking pretty rough. Beginning of the video was yesterday for me, by the way. I started to put those shelves up, and when I saw that, I just kind of sort of went into a mini meltdown mode where I was like, what the even fuck? You know, had to go inside, get on the computer, and do all the stuff to figure out the return policies and see what information I could give to update y'all with the various ways that I screwed up <laughs> with getting things done. The Sarian came in here, gave it a good cut back. I made sure with the alocasias, I'm pretty sure I mentioned that when they defoliate like this, I don't freak out about it as long as their stem is still nice and firm down towards the tuber. Main thing when pruning them is to make sure that the growth point where the newest leaf is going to come from isn't cut. So on this one where there's a leaf on here, that needs to stay, and let's see, you can kind of see, I don't know if you actually can see it on camera, but there's like a fold almost along the stem where a new leaf can come out. So that's where that needs to stay. If both of these growth points on here were to become desiccated and mushy, then may as well just cut them down, not necessarily to the soil, but right above it where there's some green and they can start pushing out from there. As long as there's still a healthy tuber in the pot, they're going to be okay. So that's had a nice drink, had some time to soak. Still a few others that could use a drink. I'm gonna make sure those all get their sips. Still a few others that could use a drink. But for the most part, I've rehydrated just about everyone. This is the thirstiest that most of the plants out here have been in a long time. And I wouldn't want to forget to give the black coral a nice drink because it could clearly use it. Soil really didn't feel all that dry on that one. I think that was one of those situations where the pot had been sitting on the ground so the swell was a little bit more cool, and sometimes when things are cool, they'll feel damp and moist, but it's not damp or moist, it was just cool. But really, the swell was just chilly. Also, not a great thing for a calocasia or an alocasia. You don't wanna water them when the soil's moist, or not moist. I, I suppose that's true too, but what I meant was when it's cool, that's when root rot can become more of an issue. Things aren't warm down in there and you give the plants water. So that's been moved up to the top shelf, warmer up there. It's not sitting on top of, well, the entire growth space is fairly warm right now. Sitting down on cold cement, which is not great. That's why it was like wicking up the cold. That's why I have the styrofoam boards laid down to set the plants on. So that here's, that's all cut up. That's what's going on now. That's what's happening. But hey, got the space cleared out for it. There's a new leaf opening up on the Monstera. That's exciting. It's not opening up, it's just poking out, so really not that exciting yet, but it will be. And had a fresh bottle of Predator might show up. You're supposed to release them early in the morning or in the evening, like dawn, dusk, but 
I figured they'd be happy just to get out. And it's not terribly warm in here. I mentioned that I had reduced the heat, so they should be fine to get out. And I remembered to grab a water bottle. If you watched the beneficial insect video, in that video, I discovered that I didn't have a single water bottle that hadn't at one point had some sort of peppermint oil or insecticidal soap in it. So I wasn't able to wet down the foliage of the plants properly, which meant I was just in there squeezing paper towels over the leaves, trying to get some moisture onto the top of the foliage. This isn't something that you should typically do with the plants, unless you have really clean water and zero concern about molds and funguses and rots starting down in the nooks and crannies down the crevices of the plants. But when releasing the beneficials, it's a good idea. Give them something to drink, give them something to stick to, just overall get them off to a better start. So that's a nice spray down. Hopefully that wasn't obnoxious on the microphone. I'm not on the audio game in this video, am I? Then, you know, just sprinkling them around. Gonna take them all over the grow space. Like I said, all the info on these guys, that's in that beneficial insect video that came out a couple weeks ago. So I'm going to do that around the rest of the grow space. And oh yeah, my point with it not being early in the morning, it's fairly early. It's like eight. So not like crack of dawn, but early-ish. Not doing it during the recommended time, sure. The temperatures aren't super hot in here, so they shouldn't become terribly stressed when I release them. And I figure they're probably going to be happier to get released than to stay inside this jar for much longer. I'm also just totally over it. A little sprinkle over here and get some more down low into the lower plants and over onto the stems where they can crawl around and up and down the stems. And then the other side is where I go the heaviest. That's where the cordolins are, the fredicosas. That's all these over here. These tend to be spider mite magnets. So I try and make sure to get the predator mites heaviest in this section, just since I'm trying to be preventative here. This is probably so obnoxious. Why am I doing this, this squeezy thing on camera? Is that making noise? Kind of. I still have the little vermiculite pouch sitting in this one from last time. Get some more sprinkled in here and just drop that back in the plant. And then I'll done. At least for right now. I'll sprinkle the rest around when we're done talking because that spray bottle is probably making a whole bunch of noise. I did find something kind of cool. I mean, sad and embarrassing, but the fun thing to notice and appreciate here. Do you see the Sansevieria? I know it's not looking all that great, but there's a story behind it. Kind of. The story of I forgot I had it and it was behind a bunch of plants on the top shelf, or the top table that was those shelves over there. And uh, this probably hasn't been watered in like a year or so, maybe just under a year. Okay, probably more like, I'll say 10 months since the plants had a good watering. This is looking pretty good considering it's been that long. It also didn't have any grow lights on it for probably the same amount of time, not quite. I shut the grow lights off in here in uh, April, probably, to the succulent section, maybe May. It was probably more like May. So there, there was no light either. It wasn't sitting by a window. It was on the top shelf up by the ceiling. We also had some pretty hot temperatures this summer. The garage is not cooled. And it, it's still here, still alive. Has some pups coming up from the side, two little offshoots. I gave it a drink, a very light drink through the top of the soil. And then I let it sit in water to soak it up for a while, which is not something I would typically do with the Sansevieria because they're so prone to rotting, especially after it's been this long or after they've gone this long without being watered. But I figured it was that or to just continue to let it die because the risk of the root rot going to be there when the plant's gone that long without being watered regardless. So I figured may as well just get it well hydrated keep it over here where it's closer to where the heat comes down from the heater. I don't want the heat blasting right on it, but there's a lot of airflow over here. So that will dry out more quickly and hopefully that will be able to put this plant into a cycle where I can water it more frequently to get it rehydrated. It's rehydrating a succulent isn't always the easiest thing. Well, it's not that hard to do. I should say it's not that it's not the easiest thing to do. It's that it requires some patience in order to get it done without rotting the plant out. With a lot of other plants like a spathophyllum, a peacely, you know, those will wilt down, and look terrible, and you can give them a really heavy drink and boom, they pop right back up. Succulents don't tend to respond quite the same. Sometimes echeverias and certain things will, but the sansevieria, I, it's not something I would expect. They're slow. Everything they do is slow. Not all Sansevieria, but the more common types we grow as houseplants, they tend to take their sweet time. So even rehydrating and plumping back out, 
it's going to take a while and that's going to need to be done by frequent watering, which Sansevieria's don't like, but it can't really be done by constantly soaking the plant. I can give it one good initial soak like I did. I'm okay with that since I have it over here in this spot, like I mentioned, where there's a really good amount of airflow and it's warmer right here. It's gonna help dry the soil up more quickly. So hopefully I'll have this into a cycle where I can water it more frequently and get it rehydrated. It should be totally fine. These are pretty sturdy succulents and I've had this one for a good amount of time. And I remember over the summer wondering where it was. I just assumed it was a plant that I gave away because <laughs> sometimes when I've had a plant for a long time and I'm not that crazy about it anymore. If somebody says they like it, I go, oh, you can take it. Just casually like, yeah, you can have it. That's fine. One less thing for me to water, enjoy. And I thought that that's what had happened with this one, but nope, it had just fallen to the back of a shelf and been sitting there with no light and no water for almost a year. I don't feel great about that, but I do think it's important to just have a moment to appreciate. What a freaking sturdy plant. You ever want to give somebody a plant? A Sansevieria is great. You say, here, take it. How do you care for it? Don't water it. Just leave it alone. It'll be fine. Not really. You have to water them, but like a light drink every few weeks and they're good to go. And that's again, very general, more for the trifasciatas, the common house plants that we see at like the big box stores in our local nurseries. Even with the cylindrical types, it's usually the case. Sansevieria's are just sturdy plants. Also, don't I know it's now a Dracaena. I know it's been changed, but my brain's still in Sansevieria mode when I talk about Sansevieria's. So Dracaena, if that makes you feel better. So that was cool. Have a plant fail there. I mean, kind of a plant fail. It's not dead yet. We'll see what happens with it. And a shopping fail by getting the wrong shelves. On a roll this week. This has been fun. I just love doing videos where I spend half of it explaining how I really just royally screwed everything up for the week. That's life. Nobody's perfect. I did want to mention before I go, the windows for the people who had asked, I got the information. They are Symington 9800 series windows, which come from a generations dealer. I talked to the guy who did the windows and the, I, I was really confused. So I wasn't sure if generations makes the Symington windows. I'm not sure it's Simonton. So S I M O N T O N windows, 9,800 series. The uh, windows with the built-in blinds are Provia. And uh, I, I, there was a lot of other information that was way over my head. <laughs> I don't even know how to explain it. One inch panes, vinyl something i i don't know they had an amazing warranty that was the biggest part with picking out windows was a good warranty a lifetime warranty a double lifetime warranty a warranty that also passes on to future owners of the house which i thought was nice and they have good clarity and they are the kind that when you push little buttons they fold inwards which makes it easier to clean so there's the info on those windows are you still dripping a little bit that's not good oh and something i thought was interesting is that the windows upstairs are tinted but the ones downstairs are not and that's because it gets really hot upstairs in the house during the summer particularly from the backyard it's like the sun just reflects off of that dark pavement for the patio and cooks the upstairs of the house so did the tinted windows for the bedrooms upstairs which i was a little apprehensive about because i thought that it would look drastically different I could have done it tinted all the way down all the way around the entire house but i figured that would be a bad idea because i like looking at a nice crystal clear window but i can't tell that they're tinted not from inside the house i look out the windows they look crystal clear so i don't know what kind of witchcraft's going on with that but I thought that was neat. You can kind of tell they're tinted from outside. You'll see more of that when it's time to get back outside. I probably won't remember to point it out, but it'll maybe be visible. Like I said, I can't really tell the ones that are tinted and not tinted, but maybe y'all will. And that's it. Happy Saturday. Or whenever you're watching this video, comment down below, say hi. Thanks for hanging out. It does mean a lot to me, especially in situations like this where I've set out to do something like move a lot of plants around and get them organized and then things just don't go as planned. Part of life, it happens. I should have looked at the box when it came in the mail. I should know better. I always check packages when they come. I can't say always, clearly not always, but I usually check packages when they come in and I just didn't think much of it. I was like, yeah, this looks like it's 48 by 24. Should be good. Oh well, is what it is. I'm gonna go inside, get the new shelves ordered. Hopefully you can get them in in time in order to make this happen for next week. I'll be watching the shipping tracker. If it looks like it's not gonna be able to happen for next week's video, then I don't know, we'll go do something else. Maybe some plant shopping. We'll figure it out, is what it is. I'm at least happy to have the space cleared out over there and have tended to the plants that weren't too happy with being away from the lights and with the cooler temperatures over the last couple weeks during the construction. So at least 
have that peace of mind. That's nice. All right, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.